terms of hepatocellular carcinoma or primary liver cancer would be attained sometime in 2020. In contrast to the western world where hepatitis C is the commonest cause of liver cancer, in our part of the world hepatitis B is the commonest cause which is very closely followed with an ever increasing incidence in the last few years liver cancer in the background of fatty liver disease and that is something which we really want the media to highlight in a very big manner because this is something which is not very well known. So in our own experience in this hospital in the last one decade we have seen and shown that fatty liver disease or NAFLD non-alcoholic fatty liver disease related cancer is second only to hepatitis B in our community. And we also believe that with hepatitis B there is an effective vaccination available but against NFLD which is a disorder of lifestyle the preventive measures are not in place to that extent as they should be. So we will not be surprised if it surpasses hepatitis B to be the commonest cause of liver cancer. So this is something which the community is still not aware of but we in the medical fraternity are seeing with increasing incidence. The hepatocellular carcinoma patients or the primary liver cancer patients who come to us, they present quite late. So in almost 60 to 70 percent of patients, even when they have doctors in the family, even when they are very well educated, the presentation to the clinician is quite late. And by that time, it is difficult to offer any curative treatment to the patients. So we must understand that this is a tumor which is very aggressive, much more aggressive than the common kind of tumors which really take our breath and sleep away. This tumor has a predilection to involve the blood vessels and if it involves the blood vessels then after that the survival is extremely dismal and in recent memory you would have heard of at least some important cases who were political leaders so on and so forth who succumbed to liver cancer because it was diagnosed very late. So, so they, these are the patients who have everything at their disposal but because there are no symptoms so the, or the symptoms are rather vague they report to the clinician very late and by that time this tumor is already quite advanced even those patients who come to us we are able to effect a cure only in a small proportion so it is important to know that there are only three curative procedures for liver cancer one is you burn it Second is you resect it, resect it means you remove it along with the surrounding liver and three is you take the liver out, the diseased liver out along with the tumour which is liver transplantation. So only these three procedures are curative. In all other procedures we call them palliative in our medical parlance. So palliative means that you are only reducing the tumour load. The tumour is not being nipped in the bud and those patients continue to remain on our follow-up. We as a medical community would want all patients to be cured of this cancer because it is very difficult for us as treating teams for the family to accept and also the cost is huge just to look after these patients and to keep them somewhat stable. So for us, effecting a cure is the priority. But for that we need to have very good awareness in the community. So like I said, hepatitis B can be prevented so we should vaccinate them. Patients who have got chronic liver disease or cirrhosis which accounts for more than 80 to 85 percent of all liver cancers that we see should be picked up early. All patients who are on cirrhosis and again here we need important inputs from the media because it is again often underreported. All patients with cirrhosis should be under surveillance. So surveillance means that we pick up these small nodules or small tumours in a cirrhotic liver before they can grow to an extraordinarily large size which we cannot handle later on. So surveillance is a must. If you pick up these tumours early, you can effect a cure. If somebody has got a well preserved liver function, we burn these tumours or we try to resect it. And that is what my colleague Dr. Tom is going to talk to you about. So this is the surgery that we have started to do in recent <coughs> times in our hospital and we depending on the characteristics of the tumour which he will be able to elaborate much better we choose whether to use the laparoscopic path or the standard technique for removing a part of the liver with the tumour and if they also have a background cirrhotic liver or tumour nodules are in different geographical regions of the liver 
or if the liver function is not very well preserved but the tumor is still confined to the liver parenchyma it's not gone into the blood vessels or outside the confines of the liver then we can do transplantation so these are the three curative procedures like i mentioned this problem is going to increase further in our community the awareness about this even in the medical fraternity is very poor many patients come to us and say that sir please start on on chemotherapy unfortunately chemotherapy works very poorly in this tumor so most of us our knowledge on cancers or tumors is based on what we see in the colon cancer or in the breast cancer which are the tumors which are exquisitely sensitive to chemotherapy whereas this is a tumor in which the conventional chemotherapy does not work so we have certain drugs which act at the molecular level those are the only drugs which work but the standard chemotherapy is not very useful for liver cancer so i think it becomes very important for us to take this initiative so that the community learns and understands about this problem and for the media also to do its role